Well, what a past 10 days it has been for the UK and Ireland. We have seen all sorts of extremes during the month of January 2024. And we have even seen a dramatic flip around between today and, of course, yesterday. Thanks for clicking on to the Monday edition of Logan's European Outlook. Hope everybody is safe and well wherever you are, even across southern portions of the UK and Ireland. During the course of yesterday, it was considered a very mild late January day. But as you continued to progress up through the UK, it was actually the northern half of the British Isles that seen some outstanding January warmth. Widely, temperatures 14, 15, as much as 16 or 17 Celsius across areas that you would typically expect mid-single figures at this time of the year. Kinlock U, we know, had a high provisional new record for the month of January for the UK as well as Scotland with a temperature of 19.6 Celsius. But that was actually 15 Celsius above the January average so pretty outstanding level of warmth. Just a week, 10 days previous to that, we had almost a foot of snow on the ground across a broad area of the northern UK. Temperatures struggling to get above freezing. We had temperatures down to minus 14 at Dalwini and widely minus 8, minus 10 Celsius in the areas that recorded 17, 18 Celsius yesterday. Actually, it was above what would be considered um, average in the month of July across the northern UK. But why why did we get so warm? Well, we know that we had a warm air mass in place, but to enhance the warmth that we already had in place, thanks to southerly winds that high over Central Europe, frontal system moving in from the west off the Atlantic, that then jacked up those southwesterly winds, roaring actually over the West Highlands, the North Highlands, uh, wind speeds, actually were as high as 90 miles per hour in Ullapool on the west coast of uh, of Scotland yesterday afternoon. So we had the warmer mixing with the fern effect as those winds uh, bumped up against the hills that were forced to rise, cross over the, the crest, the tops, and then descend on the other side of those hills. Now you can see here this little graphic represents the process of the fern effect. Alternatively, Drier sourced from higher up plunges down the lee slopes, becoming warm as it descends. So the clouds formation precipitation results in moisture loss and heat gain as the air ascends. So as that air rides up the uh, windward side of the hill, it actually gets run out. So any kind of moisture that's associated, and we did have a fairly dry air source actually. Remember that the source region of this air mass was over the eastern tropical Atlantic as well as western, northwestern Africa, up through Iberia, southern France, where we've seen temperatures of record levels, Portugal, Spain, southern France. So the source region of where this air mass was coming from was already very, very warm. Then as it moved and ascended up through the UK and Ireland, we had that milder in place already, so 11, 12, 13 Celsius. We've actually got the warmest temperatures in the southeast of England the Midlands through the course of today, while very dramatic t turnaround now taking place across the northern UK. We'll look at that in just a second. But turbulent mixing over the mountains transports heat into and moisture out of the low level fern winds. Uh, the dry cloudless lee, lee side conditions lead to further warming via solar radiation. We had a uh, hazy sunshine through the course of yesterday. Actually, there was a lot of uh, African dust uh, within the air mass itself. And we've seen that through the course of today as well across uh, across many portions of the UK. Also, it was visible in the skies here as well as uh, widely across the Cairngorms and the North Highlands during the course of yesterday. That sunshine was quite filtered. It looked kind of grainy looking, uh, even sandy uh, appearance in that filtered sun. But then as the winds then descend the hills, We've got the warm, dry, fern winds. Now, Kinloch U is a notorious site for this process. When you've got a south to southwesterly wind, this picture here represents it reasonably well. I've been in Kinloch U many times. Beautiful location in the northwest of, uh, of Scotland to the west of Inverness. 
50, 60 miles to the west of Inverness, that is. And what happens is we've got this um, Glen Doherty and the winds essentially blow out of the southwest. They cross over the crest of the hill. This road then it, it takes you down into the village of Kinloch, you itself. And as these winds are blowing, if you can try and visualize this, these winds where that photograph is taken is blowing behind and down this uh, glen towards the the village of Kinloch U, um, before it reaches Loch, Loch Marie here. And the winds are then, the air mass is actually warmest by the time it reaches the village of Kinloch U. So these winds are crossing over, blows down Glen Doherty, reaches Kinloch U at its warmest level, hence why we had this enhanced warming. So widespread at 16 to 17 Celsius was uh, was achieved across many areas. All the pool unofficial readings above 20 Celsius yesterday, by the way, <laughs> really quite quite freaky stuff for, for late January. And um, this would be a new provisional record. Now, the quality of this site is actually quite good. It's in a good environment where there's no contamination from out with, I, I believe. There may be a little bit of a, of a, a slope to the, the actual position of the weather station, which some could argue that the quality might drop slightly. But I think overall, this is a very legitimate reading of 19.6 Celsius at the, just on the outskirts of the village of Kinloch U. So remarkable stuff. This is the temperature anomaly for yesterday afternoon. And while it was warm across the board, the, the, you know, we had 12 to 15 Celsius above average. We also had some outstanding fern winds across parts of Norway. I believe those temperatures over 18 Celsius achieved yesterday afternoon in Norway. Also, thanks to those winds, if you can picture that frontal system moving through, look at the cold air compared to average out to the west. As that frontal system was uh, approaching from the northwest, we actually increased the gradient increased the winds in response and then we had maximum fern effect in this region of the UK during the course of yesterday and we also seen that across a uh, across a uh, Scandinavia also so that frontal system then eventually moved through where we've shifted the core of the warmest air now into the England and Wales as opposed to the northern half of the UK during the course of yesterday and look at this here this was the highs yesterday across the UK. Temperature at 14.2 Celsius was uh, achieved here at the house, but those winds are actually crossing over relatively cool uh, Cromarty Firth waters, so therefore we don't have uh, the same dynamics at this location near the body of water where the winds are crossing over. You're obviously cooling the air as they cross over the Cromarty Firth, albeit a very, very short distance of only about a mile and a half or so, but those winds are, are then cooled as they crossed the waters and therefore temperatures were knocked down quite a, a bit. Those winds uh, in the Northwest Highlands don't have any cold water to then uh, take some of the heat, some of the dynamic out of that. So therefore Kinloch U uh, was uh, was going to achieve that, uh, that rem remarkable figure. This is the current temperatures, by the way. And I don't think Kinloch U in the Northwest where we had to, you know, 18, 19, 20 Celsius yesterday, I think there's many areas that have not seen above 5 Celsius this afternoon. And Kinloch U did actually drop marginally below freezing this morning. So it went almost a 20 Celsius flip between yesterday, early yesterday afternoon and the early hours of this morning. What a what a contrast. What a contrast in, in the space of such a short time frame here. Look at the temperatures across the south eh, through the course of this afternoon. So 12, 13 even 14 Celsius was achieved across parts of the Midlands and the South during the course of this afternoon. If we skip back a couple of frames, you can see here it looks as if temperatures peaked at probably about 4 or 5 Celsius. Temperatures under clear skies are going to drop below freezing for a period of time before we see the temperatures coming back up. But what a contrast, what a change in the last 24 hours across the UK here. Warmest across the South cooler across the north as that frontal system moved through and we also have been seeing snowfall across northern England and also southern Scotland that frontal system that allowed the warmth to come north first then the cold come in on the back side of the front that frontal system parked across the northern 
portions of England. And with the moisture associated with that system, we actually seen snow breaking out across high elevations of northern England, southern Scotland. What a contrast even across this region. 2 Celsius, 1.8 Celsius at Estelle Muir. We had the even Carlisle at 3.7. Uh, temperature at Spadia Dam of 2.2 but then once you get into parts of the Midlands uh, South Yorkshire Lincolnshire uh, towards the Birmingham area 12 13 Celsius very very marked contrast here and it doesn't take a meteorologist to work out where the frontal system is sitting it's sitting across the north of England colder in place across the north mild still across the south if you look at the um, this 850 temperature chart of the GFS model shows very nicely frontal system and an area of low pressure embedded it developed as that front moved south here. We're seeing the system kind of develop a little bit here. You see the colder over Scotland today versus the mild we had yesterday. Milder conditions across uh, parts of uh, Wales and England, the bulk of England and Wales, seeing those uh, warm temperatures through the course of today. But that's a quite a marked contrast between north and south. Uh, across the UK here looking at the overview chart you can see that system and associated snowfall on the northern flank of the feature as it moves through so that system is going to then clear out during the course of this evening we're going to see a frost uh, develop quite quickly with clear skies light winds and colder in place here we are also getting close to freezing uh, at five to five in the evening here you're noticing a bit of a difference in the, the daylight now at this time of the year once you get towards the end of uh, January, you definitely do see an uh, extended uh, daylight hours uh, across the UK. Now, as we move towards Wednesday, the middle portions of this week, GFS highlighting a new system moving through. We're going to increase the winds yet again. Notice here the pressure difference between 980 millibars, oops, 980 millibars and um, an area of high pressure. Sorry, excuse me a second. Uh, get back to the here and now here so that system clears out then we've got a frontal system approaching from the northwest here 980 980 millibar area of low pressure in the northwest of uh, the uk we've got a 1035 high uh, very close to the uk the southern half of the uk so the isobars squeeze together we increase the pressure gradient we're going to see gales return we also could see more mild conditions as a result of this, if we look at the 850 temperature chart, we're not done with the mild conditions uh, just yet here. Not as warm, I don't think, as yesterday afternoon, but nonetheless, we are back in milder air. And with those strong west to southwesterly winds, we are going to see the temperatures jack back up. So we had a cool period during the course of today. We'll have a cool day during the course of tomorrow, especially further south. Um, you know, kind of closely matching what the, the northern half of the UK has achieved. And we're back in this kind of up and down uh, regime. If you notice here, the GFS indicating that we've got that frontal system moves through, bringing a spell of rain, even hill snow, uh, possibly a wintry mix down the lower levels, back in the colder air. Then we see the mild conditions come back once again as well. So it's a very, very mild end game to the month of January and the beginning of February for the so upcoming five day period you can see here quite a strong area of high pressure across the near continent we've got low pressure away up to the north so that is a mild atlantic flow uh fairly relatively settled pattern but we do have fronts moving in from the northwest you can see here the temperature anomaly chart here for the upcoming five day period firmly warmer than average and in terms of precipitation you can see here the upcoming seven day period is a uh, somewhat drier than average particularly so across ireland northern ireland england and wales a little bit wetter northwest highlands southeastern scotland northeastern england now we continue to monitor the situation with the mjo here just a very very quick look and see that it's continuing to try and lean more and more towards phase seven which promotes northerly blocking so we'll watch this space arctic oscillation continues to be projected to go back into negative territory so interesting times to come like share and subscribe and i'll be back again tomorrow with more bye for now